Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I have a very exciting video because I am going to be reading nothing but extreme horror all day for the next 24 hours. So I'm basically trying to chip away at my TBR and I am just going to try to read as much extreme horror as I possibly can today. Um, and basically do nothing else <laughs> so that is my plan but um i do have one thing to do I have um a physical therapy appointment tonight at six o'clock and then i will be sleeping <laughs> also i slept four freaking hours last night it is 6 30 in the morning currently i woke up at 5 a.m made a yogurt bowl got ready fed the animals and uh, made a coffee <laughs> and that's basically where we are right now um but I will be sleeping because, you know, you gotta sleep. It's healthy to try to sleep, you know? But I will be reading as much as I can throughout the day. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna kinda take you along today and check in and share with you what I'm reading and my reviews and everything. So if you like extreme horror, make sure you subscribe to my channel and just keep watching for some extreme horror reviews. So while I was getting ready this morning, I st actually started an audiobook. Um, I canceled my Audible subscription. Like I had it paused for the longest time and then they were like, we're going to renew this. And I'm like, <laughs> hell no, you're not. So I went to cancel, but I had some credits and they made me use them before I canceled. And I'm like, what the hell can I use these on? Very few extreme horror books have audiobooks. Um, but then I realized Christopher Triana has audiobooks. So I got some Christopher Triana audiobooks and then I canceled Audible. So I started um, And the Devil Cried. And this is like a mob crime novel. So far, all I know is that this is about a guy named Jackie who gets released from prison. And then, you know, he comes out of prison and he's basically accepting job jobs from the mob again it kind of reminds me of like the sopranos <laughs> and then there's this truck driver who kills his boss's son and then he sends him to go on this job basically to go after the truck driver's like teenage or preteen daughter so that's what this book is about i mean it's okay so far i don't have an opinion other than christopher triana's writing is stunning um <laughs> but that's it. So I will update you. I'm going to kind of listen to that throughout the day, like as I'm doing things. And then um, first up on the agenda for physical books of Petite Mort by S.C. Mendez and Nikki Noir. I am halfway through this guy. So this is first up on the agenda. I just want to finish this today. This is a book of short stories. Um, they're like splatterpunk smut but also mixed with like all these stories are kind of like supernatural speculative which is not my favorite so I wasn't sure how I was gonna feel um but they're also extreme horror smut like I said so this is just like something that I don't typically read but I like this so far I am on the fourth story there's eight stories and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, I counted correctly. I can count. Um, I'm on the fourth one and I, I don't know. So far, all of these are just like completely ridiculous, but I like them. <laughs> so I'm curious to see how the next four unfold and I will update you. Writing in this one is like really good as well. So I'm on a roll okay. so far. Update, so I just finished Petite Mort. It is 8.24 a.m. and I just finished this up and I liked it. Um, overall, I thought it was really well done. Like the writing was really well done. Um, it just like entirely wasn't my thing because like I said, a lot of these are speculative or supernatural mixed with like smut and extreme horror so it was like not entirely my thing but I still enjoyed it overall but I did go with a three star rating because 
like every short story collection or almost every short story collection it's like there were stories that I really enjoyed and then stories that I didn't enjoy as much so it's like hard to rate extreme not extreme horror um it's hard to rate short story collections because it's like I don't know how to rate them so I just gave it three stars which is like fair because it's like what I give almost every short story collection unless it's like an absolute banger um but yeah I think if you like really weird nutso bizarre um speculative kind of horror and you like extreme horror and smut definitely check this out also the cover is fucking stunning it's stunning I love pink I love lavender it's it's a vibe um so yeah, overall, I had a fun time with this one. I'm glad I finally got around to reading it, and I recommend it. Um, and then, so I, I don't, I don't know what to do. I'm not feeling my best. <laughs> I'm dealing with a lot of medical stuff. I have a shit ton, ton of anxiety. I'm waiting for the doctor's office to call me to schedule my surgery, and they could be calling like any day, any time. I have no idea when they're gonna be calling me so I'm like constantly checking my phone and I'm getting anxious and then the more that I check my phone the more I'm scrolling on social media for literally no reason <laughs> so I'm just like oh and my ADHD is terrible so this is just a fun day to be doing this um yeah so my plan I really 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 have been dying to read They Want Us Gone by Judith Sonnet this is just like a collection of like angry LGBTQ stories um, and it's short. It's 133 pages. So I really want to read this, but I feel like it's just going to make me angry and rage. Um, <laughs> so my plan, I think I'm going to start a book on Kindle. And then once I'm done with this one, I think I'm going to eat a snack and work out. And then after my workout, read the Judith Sonnet. Because like, I don't want to be angry and just like raging and upset before I exercise you know it's like because then I'm not gonna want to exercise <laughs> so I think what I'm gonna do I think I'm gonna read the first I'm just looking to see what I have on Kindle like way too many things as usual I think I'm going to read the first maggot girl book by Otis Bateman because it's super short I think it's only of course it doesn't tell me how many pages it is um I think it's like 40 pages or something so if that's the case I'm gonna try to read this entire book I have no idea what it's about all I know is that he told me the second and third book have to do with like snuff films and unhinged women I mean this is a vibe <laughs> I have no idea what I'm getting myself into but I think we all need to give Travis a round of applause because I finally got him to watch I Think You Should Leave my favorite show the best show ever and now he's part of the turbo team the amount of extreme horror authors that I have gotten to watch I Think You Should Leave I feel like I am some kind of cult leader at this point <laughs> Oh man, what the fuck? <laughs> so, okay, Maga Girl, super short, the first one's super short. Um, this is about a woman named Morticia, Morticia, who is completely unhinged, okay? We love it, we love that here. Um, and she has a lot of sexual fetishes, I guess you could say. <laughs> And one of them is putting maggots up her. Yeah, yeah, it's a lovely little tail. <laughs> so this is definitely just gross for the sake of being gross. Like there's no real like plot or storyline in this first one. Like it's just gross for the sake of being gross. Which like isn't my favorite thing in the world like it's not like my favorite you know they're not my favorite books in the world but it was entertaining and it was fucking hilarious I listen he's just hilarious what more can I say I was cracking up like this is <laughs> I can't I can't this is just nuts this is completely nuts so <laughs> I gave this four stars 
I am definitely going to be reading the next one, which is about snuff films. So, um, yeah, I, like I said, I'm going to go eat a snack. And after my snack, I am going to work out. And then I think I'm going to read uh, the Judith on it next because I feel like I need to be destroyed a little bit. Um, my anxiety is fucking terrible today. Like my heart is like pounding. It's actually very difficult for me to focus on reading today. So that's fun. <laughs> um, but I'm hoping maybe like a sad book will like suck me in and then I can get back into the funny business. <laughs> Okay, hi! So it is now 10.32 a.m. I just did my workout, had a little snack, did my workout, Bell. I made just like some protein powder and milk in my blender bottle because I'm hungry, but it's not lunchtime yet. It's 10.30 in the morning. So I'm hoping like some protein powder holds me over for at least another hour or two and then I will eat lunch. I love how this is turning into a what I eat in a day. Listen, my entire life revolves around food. I eat every two hours. So that's just my life. Like I, every two hours I'm eating something. So that's why this entire vlog is just me sitting around eating. But anyways, Justin just had to go to the office. Belle is licking the tripod. Belle, that's disgusting. You don't know where that's been. Um, so yeah, Justin just went to the office for a little bit. Um, it's the cat. This is just like a part of my videos. Like my cat just loves the tripod. This is just like a normal situation here. Um, yeah, Justin had to go to the office for a little bit so I can finally like film in the living room a little bit. Usually I only film in my office because like I don't live alone and Justin a lot of times works from home and he works in the living room. So and like I work in my office. So that's why I'm like always sitting in my office because like I film in there and I also like do my job in there. But um, yeah, so what am I saying? I'm like short of breath. I keep getting this pain in my side because all my endometriosis is here. Like all of my organs are glued together on the right side of my body, like literally cemented together. And I think that's why I eat so much too, because I get full quickly and then I'm hungry all the time. Cause I think just my organs are literally glued together. So that's fun. And I'm like, so anxious because I was hoping that the doctor would call me either today or tomorrow to schedule my surgery because I'm off from work and I can answer the phone, but of course they're probably gonna wait till I go back to work and I won't be able to answer the phone. But yeah, um, so I am going to sit here on the couch and get through this bad boy and I'll update you when I have an update. <sighs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm crying a little bit. I have 30 pages left of this book and holy fucking shit, dude. I'm just in absolute awe right now. Um, <sighs> fuck. I feel like I need to finish this book and formulate my thoughts. I thought that I had thoughts, but I am just like, Wow. So I just finished They Want Us Gone. Holy fucking shit. One of the best books I've read so far this year and quite possibly my entire life. I don't know if you can tell, I'm sweating right now. I'm dripping in sweat. I just cried for 15 minutes. It's exactly 12.30 right now. I just sat on this couch crying. <sighs> Fuck. This is a book of short stories. I think I said that earlier. Um, um, about, you know, L the LGBTQ plus community. And it's just angry stories um, about, you know, just the shitty people in the world. Uh, 
and how gay and trans and members of the LGBTQ plus community get treated on a daily basis by just shitty fucking people. And um, they're angry, they're sad, they're depraved. Like, these stories are very raw, very vulnerable. And, you know, a very accurate depiction of what Judith and what other trans people go through and queer people and, um, you know, what they go through on a daily basis, just like dealing with people who suck. Um, and I felt like I just went to therapy with Judith. Like, this broke my heart into a million fucking pieces. Like, and, you know, I'm friends with Judith and I just feel like reading my friend like I just felt like I I just read my friend's diary you know and there are some stories in here okay this kind of feels like well when I was reading this first of all the writing is stunning every single story stunning um and I almost felt like I was reading an Eric LaRocca book. But I, you know, I, I have a very hit or miss relationship with, like they have some books that I really like and book, uh, I can't talk, um, stories that I really like. And then they have some stories and books that I don't like. Um, but I do respect them as an author. That's how I felt reading this. Some of the stories, like the one, what was the name of it? Your Little, Your Little God, I think. Yeah, Your Little God was the one that I was like, oh my gosh, this reminds me so much of Eric. Um, and with the just like the metaphors and there's this meta thing that goes on like in the second half of the book where her stories, um, like she's being interviewed within the story and kind of explaining things about the stories and the metaphors and things that have happened in her personal life and the reasoning for her writing this book just does this meta thing and i was living for it like this is so well done so raw so vulnerable so open i i just cannot imagine i, I cannot imagine going through some of these things i'm speechless i'm fucking speechless i I just cannot praise this book enough. I absolutely cannot praise this book enough. Nothing I say is going to give this justice. Just please go pick it up. Please read it and please go support her. Her writing just gets better and better and better and better and better. And I'm like, oh my gosh, girl, how much better can you get? Because I'm so obsessed. <laughs> so obsessed um i just the amount of strength it takes to write something like this and the amount of vulnerability that goes into this i can't praise this enough i i don't know what to do with myself right now like it's 12 30 i think i'm gonna make some lunch and just try to like relax for a second um i think i'm gonna listen to my christopher triana audiobook while i eat lunch um my dad made turkey chili and brought over like a pot of it so i'm gonna eat some turkey chili and just try to like calm down <laughs> okay so i don't know what to read next i have options okay i'm just a woman with many options <laughs> so i still want to read the second maggot girl book but i don't know if i want to start it right now because I'm so indecisive. So I was going to read Christopher Triana's The Prettiest Girl in the Grave because I was like, oh, this is like a short, cute little book, right? No. This is so dense with words. Like, <laughs> I don't know if you can tell, the words are so teeny tiny. So like, I think I'm just gonna try to read this on my own next week and put it in my wrap up. If I get to it, we'll see. Um, I also wanted to read Uncanny Valley Days by C.J. Um, Sempera, uh, but this one's kind of longer too. This is almost 200 pages. This is something like she, I don't know, this is about this girl who like awakes an evil entity with a, a tweet or something. I don't, I don't, yeah, what is this? I don't know. <laughs> It's as people that cross her path start winding up dead. I don't know. 
I don't know. Something about weed. <laughs> I don't know, okay? This sounds wild. It looks wild. Um, and then I just was sent this book from one of you guys. This is from Janessa. So thank you so, so much. Please comment down below if that is you so I can personally thank you. This is Zola. Um, I don't know what this entails. It's a extreme horror about cheese. All I hear is that this is extremely, extremely disgusting. So I'm kind of intrigued. Um, I have Eels by Judith Sonnet. I have so many freaking books on Kindle. Like there's a couple that I want to read in July because I know that they're just too long. But um, The Girl in the Cellar by Matt Shaw and Aaron Beauregard. It's one of those U-turn novels, which I was obsessed <laughs> with the uh, Innocence by Michael Bray and Matt Shaw. Um, so I wanted to check that one out. That one's really short, so that's an option. Um, I've been wanting to check out Bridget Nelson, so I have all of her short story collections on here. I have What the Fuck Was That, Sweet, Sour, and Spicy, and A Bouquet of Viscera. I have all three of those on here. I've been wanting to read Brian G. Berry. I have The Sleepover Massacre downloaded. I'm dying to read this one, but I don't remember what it's about. It's called Blue Jay by Megan Stockton. What is this about? Is there a way to look this up? I don't have my phone on me. I, I don't remember what this is about. But all I remember is that I was watching Marcy from Marcy Reads. She did like a big extreme horror haul on her channel. And this was one of the books. And I remember hearing the plot of this one and being like, oh my God, it was an instant purchase for me. Um, and then of course, you know, I have every single Otis Bateman book. I have Better the Devil You Know, The Harbinger of Vengeance by John Athen. I've been dying to read that one. I have a bunch of John Athen on here. Um, I have a lot. I have a lot. And I, I just can't decide what to read. I kind of want to, okay, I kind of want to read this Blue Jay book because it just sounded so good. It's 121 pages. I think I'm going to dive into this one and let you know what it's about. <laughs> it's two o'clock and I think I'm officially like disintegrating. <laughs> <laughs> falling asleep and I'm super fucking dizzy and anxious my heart is like pounding for no reason and my eyes are sore like I've just been reading for so long that my body is shutting down <laughs> but I'm 40% through Blue Jay and now I remember why I wanted to read this it's a snuff film book <laughs> so this is about these three guys um and they're like all into like sick depraved crap and they like collect all this like horror memorabilia and they're into all this what was that noise they're into all this weird crap and um i keep hearing noises so they get this invitation to go to this like theater this matinee and it's supposed to be like a torture simulator so they think that they're going to be like watching this like torture simulation thing and they get there and something a little shady's going on they may or may not be involved in a stuff now okay so i'm like dying <laughs> I am not feeling well. I'm dizzy. I'm starting to get delusional from not moving all day. Uh, yeah, and it's like a million degrees in here. Um, I did finish up Blue Jay. And this one, I'm going to go with three stars. I liked it. I would recommend it, you know. But the thing is, I just read a book that was very very similar to this one so it was very predictable for me and I kind of knew where this was gonna go like the twist was predictable and um overall like I think it lacked a little bit of character development didn't really care like what was happening to these characters because I just like I didn't know enough about them to care so that's kind of where it was lacking for me. Overall, like, it was good. I would recommend it if you're a fan of, like, the 
snuff film trope. <laughs> um, that's kind of all I have to say. So I just went right down the middle with a three star because it's kind of that like in between, like there were things I liked and things that I didn't like. Um, but then I started the second uh, Maggot Girl book, Maggot Girl episode two, I think it's called by Otis Bateman. And I got 15% so far. And listen, listen, it has an unhinged woman an unhinged woman getting revenge on shitty men. A dark web snuff film element. Someone named Kim White. This character is literally named after Kim from Full Brutal by Christopher Triana, my favorite freaking book of all time. Can you get any more perfect? It's like he went into my brain, picked out all the things that I love, and then wrote a book. Yeah, I'm obsessed so far. So we're following Morticia, the main unhinged girl, <laughs> and she now has this like dark web sort of thing going on where she basically just like films herself torturing and killing crappy men and like getting revenge on them. Obsessed. Need I say more? I just finished Mag Girl episode two and I just want everyone to know that the breast count was six. This author mentioned the word breast six times and I've never felt more uncomfortable. Like this man is just, he needs to be stopped. Oh my gosh, look at me. <sighs> it is so humid. Like my hair is disgusting, my makeup feels disgusting, like I just feel sticky all over, I can't wait, I'm about to take a shower. So it is now 8, oh my gosh, no matter what I do with my hair, it's gonna be gross. It's now 8.11pm and I just got home, I just went to physical therapy and then I came home and I ate dinner, I had some veggie curry and now... I'm about to take a shower and I just finished, um, I finished, what was the Christopher Triana book? And the Devil Cried, was that the name of it? Um, I finished that in the car on audio on my way home and that one, I ended up giving five stars. So well written, so well done. So like I said, you know, he, his boss, wanted him to go after this truck driver's daughter she's 11 um because they the truck driver killed his son right um and you know he has like his own way of going about things and what he has planned for this little girl and it's fucked this guy like i am talking patrick bateman if he was in the mob like that is this book I, he is so unhinged so crazy i hope i don't look crazy right now i can just see in the little viewfinder these little hairs bouncing around you're not doing this right now <laughs> um but he is so crazy the things like reading the thoughts from his head insane i was just like this the whole time Did he really just think that? Did he really just say that? <laughs> like, that was me listening to this audiobook. Um, <laughs> literally American Psycho. Like, I don't know what else to say. Um, just like, the things that he was thinking and doing, it wasn't like the most extreme, extreme horror. There are things, like, if you are sensitive to things involving children, you might want to skip this one. But it was depraved. Insane. And I gave it five stars. Christopher Trona, like, listen, he's such an amazing, freaking talented writer. I just cannot rave about this man enough. I, I love him. I love him. <laughs> it was so good. It was just so good. I don't know. I don't know what else to say. And then I finished um, the MAGA Girl episode two. Um... And I loved it. Listen, this book 
Is it a masterpiece to my sense of humor? Yes. <laughs> it is ridiculous, but that's what makes it funny. Like, it, I don't know what it is. His books are so freaking funny to me. So funny. So entertaining. I was just entertained and laughing the whole time. So I ended up giving this one a 4.5 rounded up to five stars on Goodreads, okay? Um, I ended up giving it a 4.5. I, I loved it. I had a fun time with it, and I just absolutely loved. Morticia's so unhinged, and I just love how he, like, puts in his books, like, people that he knows, or, like, he makes a lot of references to American Psycho, or, like, just things that he loves, and it just makes it, like, cute and wholesome you know, like a cute and wholesome family novel, but like, I, I think I might be the only person that ever called this book cute and wholesome, but yeah, I don't know. All his characters have little quirky things about them. I just had so much fun, and you know what? That's what reading is all about, so I really enjoyed it. I just had fun, and ODB does it again. He does it again. And I just love books about crazy women that kill crappy men. What more can I say? What more can I say? So I don't think, I don't know if I'm gonna read another book tonight. I'm exhausted. I have to start the new Riley Sager tomorrow and vlog that. I'm on a roll this week. Um, I might, I might try to read the Harbinger of Vengeance by John Athen because that was on my TBR this month and I've been really looking forward to that one. It's 150 pages. I don't know. Can I do it? I don't know. Um, I might try to read as much as I can tonight and like just give you my final thoughts in the morning when I wake up and finish it if I don't finish it tonight. Uh, but yeah. And then the third Maggot Girl book, I think I'm gonna try to, I don't know, I might read it this month and try to put it in my wrap up. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how many more books I can read this month. I feel like I am just starting to stress myself a little bit. <laughs> Hi. It's the next morning if you couldn't tell. I am exhausted. Like completely exhausted. I slept another four hours last night. I started The Harbinger of Vengeance by John Athen. I got 50% through before I fell asleep. So I'm going to try to finish the other 50% today. I don't know. Um, I also am going to do my Riley Sager reading vlog today because I have to go back to work tomorrow and like I just want to get things filmed and done so I don't have to worry about them when I'm having a nervous breakdown at work. But uploading twice a week is definitely too much for me. Like. After these next two weeks, I'm going back to once a week because having a job, like having, I have two jobs and there are a couple days in Saturday that I'm working at my second job. So like, it's just not realistic for me. Um, but yeah, uh, what was I saying? Um, I got, what the fuck? Literally nothing makes sense. Nothing makes sense. Everything is a blur. None of my ratings make sense from yesterday. Um, nothing literally nothing makes sense and it's just driving me insane like I don't remember anything that I read I am just a mess but the harbinger of vengeance is this book where this this kid was like bullied uh, pretty badly in high school and then um it, there were like three people that bullied him and but like the head guy like the the ringleader, I don't know. <laughs> he was like the main one, like telling these other people to bully him. So now it's like years and years later, they're in their early 30s, I believe. And um, he's been like stalking this guy that bullied him in school. And now he's like blackmailing him and sets up this game where he's like, okay, you have to play this game and you have to do all these like crazy sinister things based on the things that you did to me when I was in school, if that makes sense. It's like, oh, you did this to me, so now you have to do it this way, but it's a little more sinister and a little more extreme horror-esque. 
and I love it so far. I think it's a lot of fun. I love books where it's like a game or something of that nature. So yeah, hopefully I can finish it today and then I'll just give you um, uh, my thoughts later on and try to make some sense of what the heck I just filmed yesterday. So I am currently editing this video and just realized I never told you my thoughts on the John Athen book, The Harbinger of Vengeance. I gave it four stars. I really, really like this one. And it was just so well thought out, well done, solid book for me. I really enjoyed it. I'm sorry if you hear the vacuum. It wasn't like extreme, extreme, extreme horror. Like there was still violence and gore and extreme horror, but it wasn't like super, super graphic like his other books. So if you're looking for like a more toned down version of Jonathan, this would be great for you, especially if you can't handle something like Into the Wolves Den, Shared by Two, um, The Groomer. Those are like my favorite books by him that I've read so far, I think. So if you can't handle something like that, I would go for something like this where it's a little bit toned down, but still extreme horror and still very good. Also, I don't know if I did an outro. <laughs> I was just a mess this whole day that I filmed this. So yeah, I hope you guys like this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye.